Hey, welcome back to Belly Arts and Education Masterpiece in Progress. My name is Kathy. I'm going to be your artist instructor today. I'm here. We're going to be painting this beautiful little butterfly, kind of quick, easy. What are we going to need to paint this? Well, I've got an 8 by 10 canvas, so it's not very big. It'll go pretty fast. I started out, I've already uh, put color on my background and I'm using the Desert Turquoise by um, Deco Art. Love, love this color. Oh, I was gonna use a blue green, I forgot about that. But I went with Desert Turquoise. Um, I also have some Titanium Snow White, which we'll be using quite a bit. We just need this for the background. And then we're gonna um, have a couple of greens that we're gonna use, the Hauser Medium Green and the Sour Apple. For the flower, we're going to use, um, I've got a couple of yellows here, just a bright yellow. Probably going to use this primary yellow. For the butterfly, Jack Lennon orange in a carousel pink and some lamp black. Those are the colors we need. Brushes. Well, I have this uh, royal gold. A one inch brush that's what I use for the background and then I'll retire that and then I'm probably just going to use uh, a number six and a zero for the detail one other important piece if you've got some bubble wrap around this is the small that's how we get these little bit of texture in there and a piece of chalk I'm going to just show you a little technique that I use so, you know, until I'm completely happy with my sketch or my painting. And uh, we'll go from there. All right. So let's go ahead and get your background on. Now, I kind of debated, do I, I think in the original, I probably put the background on afterwards, but I just kind of like to get that background on because it's nice and smooth. Now you have to make some decisions here. Okay, where is my vine going to be? You know, this butterfly is huge, but I love, love, love it. So I'm going to start here and then this is going to just be uh, my little um, vine here. Now what's nice about chalk, if I mess up, I can just take it off. Now sometimes I will use white paint and uh, I will use that next, but I want to get the sketch in here. And then our flower here, it is going to come right across here. That's going to be, and then we're just going to have these petals out here. And again, we're not committed at any point until we start to put paint on. And even then we can probably not be committed. And then we're going to start with the body of He's got a pretty big body, so you can see the head here, and then we've got this big body, and then his feet's going to come out. So we're going to start here. We're just going to get that body. We've got going to come right down here, his tail again. Now this is where we kind of like kind of dissect this just a little bit. If you look, we've got one big wing here. We get another wing that comes. We're always going to start down here with this body. So here's this large wing. And again, we're not committed. I'm going to take it all the way down. About right there. We're going to cover it up. We're going to come right inside here. And we're going to go up. And in a little bit. And back down toward that body. This little guy, he just kind of looks like a big leaf. So again, starting at that same point in the body, we're going to come right along, give him a point and a big leaf. We have our sketch on. Now we can kind of come in here. I think I did like a little heart leaf. You, you could just do any type of leaf in here that you want. And again, we'll, we'll get those painted in. But I kind of just wanted to get the placement of our butterfly first. Are you with me? Yay. All right. So first thing that we're going to do, I'm going to take um, the number six. 
I could probably use a little bit of clear one, but I'm on a small canvas, so I'm okay with that. And because I painted the background, I'm going to underpaint everything in white. So now here's where I can come along and just right on top of that chalk, just start to, I think I needed it to do a better job cleaning my brush up. This is a new brush that I just started with, but it's got a little bit of paint in it. I could have swore I cleaned that yesterday. So let me just switch up. I'm going to go to a number eight because it's clean. And I'll have to scrub that. All right. And again, just going to go right along here, right along this line. Again, we're not committed to anything really yet. That's a little bit thick, but that's all right. And then right in here. gonna block in my flower here. This is going to be that center. And even at this point, we're still not committed. I mean, we can change our mind. We can recover that background and do all of those things. And any color of chalk will work. I could have used a darker blue chalk, I could have used a white chalk, anything will work. Just gives you those lines in there that you can kind of follow. Now, why do we underpaint? Well, especially this flower, um, the background's darker than the yellow that we're going to be putting on there. So if we don't, you're not going to really get a pretty yellow because so many of these colors are transparent. Okay. Probably just wanna reinforce this just a little bit more. Notice my pinkies right up here against the canvas so I don't press too hard and get too fat. There we go. I go right in here and just do a leaf here. I may want to do another leaf up here. It's not my original, but you know what? I think I just kind of go with my flow. I'm not going to worry about the body too much because I know he's going to be in black, but I really want these other colors to pop. So I am going to underpaint him. I get some more white here. I literally need to get some more white. I'm about out of deco art white. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with this bigger leaf, and I'm just going to Gonna get rid of that in there. And we'll just underpaint this. Sometime, I'm actually glad I switched to this bigger brush. Because I can just swab that paint on there. Doesn't have to be perfect because this is the first layer of many to come. And you can paint your butterfly any color that you really want to paint it, but I just really kind of like these colors. Uh, purples, a couple like a light and dark purple would be really pretty in here. I'd love to see you guys be creative and paint. The basic thing is getting the shape of the butterfly. And then you can just get wild and crazy. So I was on a hiatus in the month of July this year. Just needed a painting break. <clears throat> I 
I went out and bought, well, of course I've been making masks and I went out and bought myself a new sewing machine and it also does embroidery and it's been so much fun. I will have to share with you some of the things that I want have been doing because guess what? It's all art. And I'm really excited. I actually have a private event coming up that I get to teach in person. And I'm super excited about that. It's I've missed seeing people. Just a quick underpainting there. I think I've got everything. I've got you know, just because I want to be a little bit different today, I need a little bit more white. I think we'll also, when we're done, I don't know, we may splatter a little bit of pixie dust. Okay, I just decided I wanted another little leaf here. All right. Rinsing out my brush. And we're going to start now. I have ceiling fans and everything going. It should be pretty dry. I'm going to start out with my greens first. We're going to get that vine in there, paint the flower, work on the butterfly. All right, so I'm starting with my darker green, which is the Hauser medium green. I'm going to go ahead and get my sour apple. I don't know, this is one of my favorite greens, the sour apple. It's bright. And I am using this mixed media uh, fluid acrylics today because I was out of yellow in the regular Americana. Like, how did that happen? But I can always, nope, it's a primary, can't always make it. A little bit of yellow there. I have so much paint on me, and what have I done? White, and I have all this other color on, on my hands. So typical. All right, I'm gonna stick with this number eight. Um, actually, you know what I might do? I might do this yellow first because it's a light color. I might just do the yellow first and then we'll start with some of the darker. Then I know I have a nice clean brush. Now, see what I'm saying about you can see if that white's not solid in there. This yellow's pretty transparent. So you definitely need that white in between those colors. Now, I may come back and do another layer of this white, and known to, or this yellow, and known to do that, just to brighten that up a little bit more. Must have been still wet there. And I kind of pulled that white right out of there. It's all right. Okay, done. Rinsing my brush, wiping it off on my napkin. Now, if you've been painting with me, you guys know anytime you go to your water, you always want to wipe it off on your napkin because you don't want that. These brushes are made for water, so they carry a lot of water in them. All right, I'm going to start with our darker green on this fine. I'm using the tip of this. This is a filbert. I love filberts. Now, my friend Janice from Australia, who I hope you guys have been following on YouTube, um, she is a angled brush girl. So it's funny how we kind of develop our own little quirks. But she is, oh, 
an amazing artist. So please follow her on YouTube. It's Janice Timmins, T-I-M-N-S. I'm hoping that she'll be back in town next year. Hope we're past all this stuff next year. Again, I'm just kind of taking my time. It's not perfectly straight. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that sour apple. I'm just going to pop that in there while this is wet. And just not a whole lot, but it just kind of gives it a little bit of color there. And then we'll do our leaf here. We'll come back in here uh, too and get a little bit more detail on those. Just taking a little bit of that sour apple and blending it in there. When that dries a little bit more, I will take some more to make it pop. Now, um, I'm using a board. Typically, I use um, canvas sheets, but I want it um, just a little bit smaller here. So, this is a board. And I went, I used to do canvas everything, and then I went to boards because... When you paint a lot, teach a lot, you're you run out of storage space. All right. It's so funny when I normally create something. It is not with an easel. And I feel like so much shakier. This way. All right. Picking up sour apple here and just going right along. And just kind of planting some color in there. There we go. Clean in the brush. Now, let's go ahead and grab our lamp black. And we're going to paint the body here just so we can see him. If I was really organized, I'd have all of the stuff open and ready to go. And I am going to switch to a little bit smaller brush just because this is pretty tiny in here. And now I'm just going to go in there and lay his head in. I gave him a gigantic head, by the way. I went down to my zero here. We'll add the legs after we paint that center. I guess I should have painted that center. And I gave him a pretty long tail in here. I have another butterfly painting coming up in a couple weeks. It's three butterflies, and they're actual butterflies um, that I saw at the Butterfly World. Very pricey place to go, especially at 120 degrees. Not fun. All right, I'm going to let that set up. I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab a little yellow and I'm going to put 
put some orange on my palette. Because I'm going to mix a little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow together to make this orangey yellow to right on top. And I may have too much yellow in there. That's okay. Layer one. But what I'm going to do now with this yellow, I'm going to pick up more yellow and pull it through here. And then I want to come in, pick up straight orange on my same dirty brush, and then just pull some of this orange through there very, very lightly while it's still wet. And if I get too much, then I can always just paint over some yellow. Grabbing the yellow, kind of wetting that up a little bit. Grabbing some orange and just pulling that through. And I just want, there we go. Now I may, I want this just a little bit darker in here. And I think what I'm going to do, I am going to add another color here. I'm going to add some red. And I think we'll use... Oh, I'm looking for my Tuscan red. Little bit of Tuscan red I'm gonna put on my plate. And I'm gonna incorporate some of that into the butterfly too, I do believe. Pretty, pretty red. And I'm gonna mix a little of the red and the yellow. There we go. To get like a deeper orange here. And then let's lay that color in there. I notice I'm not really painting, I'm just kind of laying that color in there. Need that to dry a little bit more. And we'll probably add more. All right. Now let the fun begin. How did we do this before? All right. Pink. I need pink, 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 pink. So we're going to start in here with this pink. And then we'll pull some orange in here and some red. So pink. We'll blend into the orange, which will blend into the red. I love this pink. Pink, pink. Okay, clean, fairly clean brush. As clean as I can get it for now. All right, starting with my pink. Now, again, we're just kind of laying this paint in here. Just wherever you want it. And get close to his body. We got to come in here and put lines and just wherever you want this pink. I'm just lay it in there. I'm going to pick up my orange, which I need more of. This is just going to, and I love how that orange and pink kind of blend together in there. And this is just, we'll probably do this again. Because you got to have more than one layer. And there is just how I'm kind of just laying, this is what I call just laying the paint down. I mean, this is coat number two. And there's going to be many, many more. Not, I shouldn't say many, many more. There's going to be a couple more. Same dirty brush. You're going to come in here. Well, Tuscan's a little bit bright, so we're just going to tone it down just a little bit. Must it? I actually did this painting a long time ago. 
And again, I'm just going to mold some orange into there, pick up some paint, paint, pink, pink paint. Kind of blending that all together. I'm going to wipe out my brush a little bit because I got quite a bit of paint in there. And then just come in here and see what I have. All right. And I am picking up a little bit of yellow when I pick up that red. Kind of gives it a different orangey bill. I'm just blending that all in. So the red, some yellow. This is when I really kind of get a little bit quieter and concentrate and I'm just grabbing red, yellow, and orange all together. Mix it. All right. Okay, we're going to cover up some of this white, so now I'm going to get serious. Alright, I'm wiping out my brush. Now sometimes I have a paper, I'm not a paper towel, I have a towel down here on my easel and I just dip in and wipe my brush off. I'm going to go back into the paint. I got, I'm going to go back into the paint paint quite a bit. Now I'm just going to come in here and just kind of put that wherever I feel like I want to spread it out here. It's going to be bright. I'm going to pick up some red here. Again, not a lot of pressure on this. Got a lot of paint, but not a lot of pressure. And I just kind of sometimes, well, I've got some pink here. I want some more pink up in here. My butterflies are never going to look exactly the same. I can just tell you that. I'm going to pick up a little bit of this orange. Put some up in there. It's very kind of loose here. All right, that needs to dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to pick up a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, and then I just want to go right in here one more time. And down here. Very, very lightly. Don't get too crazy. If you do, then you're going to go back in and, all right, that's too crazy right in there. Pick up some yellow. Uncrazy it a little bit. Beat that out a little bit. Won't hide it completely, but... It will take it back a little bit. All 
Okay. Let me come in here just a little bit of yellow on my vine. On my leaves here, just to add a little bit more color. All right. Now comes, I think this is a little challenging part. Switching to my zero. I want you just to kind of take a look at this. So now we're going to make these loops. So what we have to do, we're going to come in here and just wherever you, you kind of want, we're going to make these loops in here. Um, but you know what, before I do that, we're going to bubble wrap. All right, make sure you have some clean light. I love that pink and orange and red together. I don't know why this white is super thick today, but it is. I am going to water it down just a little bit. And when I say water it down a little bit, I'm going to take my brush, dip it in the water, and just kind of thin it out just a little bit. Just like that. Okay. Now, you really don't need a very big piece, but what I like to do is I kind of like to wrap my fingers around this, like this, and then I'm gonna go into my white paint and make sure I dab some on there, and then we're just gonna go right along here very lightly, and we're just gonna put some texture in there. Don't get crazy carried away, you can, but I think it just gives us a little bit more fun in there. Could we do some over here in the flowers? Oh yeah. Yeah, fun. All right. We're gonna let that dry for just a minute. You're gonna want some lamp black or some black. You are gonna want this to be thinner. So black, I don't know. Every brand seems to be a little bit thicker. I don't know if it's the, what makes it that way. You could only speculate. There are certain paints that will dry quicker, I know, especially in oils. All right. Now you're going to just start to put your loops in. And if we have this first layer of the white down, and if we want to go back and put more down after we get these in, we can. Um, but before we do that, now you can do this with a zero, but also if you have a little pen, this is not the pen I want. Um, if you really want precision and have a lot more control, you can also use a, um, another type of pen. This is a zebra, and I don't know what size it is right off. It's a 150. Really nice point on it, and I'll just kind of show you. Uh, I use this pen a lot to kind of come around and clean up things, and now if I want to put these little legs right there, I have a little bit more control. So here's where if I wanted to... I would definitely use this pen to outline my flower. A, I just have so much more control over it, in theory. If I had this in my lap, and not on an easel, okay? And then I would come right along here with this, make a little wiggly point there. I could just put a little, and it just kind of gives that flower a little bit more character. Don't get carried away with it though. Again, you want to probably do the same thing in your vine, just outline that. 
So, you know, I can outline it here or I'll just switch to my brush and we'll do it that way. Now, you want a thin, thin brush, thin paint, not so runny that it gets all over the place. But now, I'm going to just turn this a little bit. And we want to make sure that we do outline the butterfly. So again, it you want as thin as possible. And this is where I say that pen comes in handy. But I know some people, oh, we're cheating. We're using a pen. Now, it's called multimedia art. I mean, you could use anything. You could use anything. A Q-tip to paint. It doesn't have to be always with a brush. And I think I do bring this all the way in. I'm going to divide this wing. And then right in here. I'm going to divide this wing. Come right toward that body. I go to the water often, go back into my paint, and I roll my brush in the paint. And then I'm going to make sure that any excess I get off because I don't want this big glob. Trust me, if I figure out a way that I can turn my camera and paint on a flat surface, I would be doing that. And sometimes the faster you go, the better because then you're not. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Pick it up. I'm going to get really close in here. I'm holding this. That way I'm just a little bit closer to the paint picture. And I might have a little bit more control. All right. So we got those all done. So now we're going just to start this swoop. Oh, Kathy, swoop. What do you mean swoop? So let's start our swoop. So I'm going to start probably looking at my picture here. I probably, or loop swoops. And I kind of start like this. Now, that's a lot of paint because guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to roll it and get some of the excess paint off. And then this loop's going to be a little bit higher and down. And this one can kind of come up a little bit more. So we can have one right there. All right, see what I mean here? We're going to do the same thing over here. I go back to my water. Get some more paint, get some of the excess off so we don't glob it on. And then we're going to do this tail. I think these two are easier to do because I kind of go right along there and make a loop and come back down. Make a loop, come back down, make a loop, get more paint. I think you guys get the gist of this. And that one will be a short one right there. Then we'll have a long one there. We'll connect these two. Connect these up here. And then we can always go back in and darken these up too once you get them in there. See, I think I almost do better holding. I hope you've been able to see this. All right, so on this one, a few times ago, what did I do? All right, so here, I'm going to start in the middle. That's what I did here. Started in the middle, up, 
up, up, and just start. And we'll have one come right off of here, go up here, another one in here, just kind of go with it. Offset them a little bit. And there we have it. Now I'm going to come and connect right in here his body to his. All right. Now we are almost done. He needs antennas. Yes, that was my paint that just went all over the floor. I've had one of those weeks. Broke a door today, ran into a door yesterday. I've just done dumb stuff. I'm going to go back to the pen. I'm just going to put these little antennas on here very, very, you know, very, very lightly. I'm going to mark in here and put some veins in my leaves outline these just have fun with this and again you know I just do these short little strokes they're not perfect they're not anything we were going for perfection. Art is probably not. Well, there are some fabulous perfectionist artists out there. Really good. All right. Okay, I think one other thing that we need is I think we need some more white in there to kind of pop it after we get this on. So I'm going to go back to my popping paper. Oh, and there, I might still have some paint on there. If not, I'll go get some more paint and then just go right over this again, just like that. And what that does, it kind of pushes those veins back into the butterfly. That was my chair. Needless to say, there was a ton of paint on there, thank goodness. Although I have paint all over my floor. I really like this pink and orange and how it all blends together. Going in here, gonna pick up a little bit more white. Dab some of it off because I don't want to be too crazy with it. But again, just touch very really gently and Voila! We have our beautiful butterfly. Don't forget to sign your painting. You can sign with a paintbrush, you can sign with a pen, you could stamp it. You can do whatever you choose to do. I think this was a fun painting today. This is my signature in my spooky heart. Hope you enjoy. Join us again next week. We'll have another masterpiece in progress. Thanks and have a great day. Peace out.